Hello everybody. Welcome to Tuesday's Tales. I'm sorry that it couldn't be live today. Something's up with the internet. Probably this cold weather. Oh my goodness. Well, tonight we have two stories that we're going to have. And one of them is Christmas Tree in the White House. And our Bible story story is A Christmas Tree for Jesus by Susan Jones. And we'll read that at the end. So, Let's get started with a Christmas tree in the White House by Gary Hines, illustrated by Alexander Walner. President Roosevelt dashed down the hallway, his six children tumbling behind him. Bully, cried the president, leaping around the obstacle course of chairs. Womp! A pillow went sailing over his head. Missed! yelled the boys. I'll get you now! the president hollered. Charge! Squeals of laughter bounced off the walls as the children toppled onto the floor with their father. Theodore Roosevelt jumped up. I surrender! he yelled. We win! cried Archie. That really is a lot what happened. They had a lot of fun in there. The giggles died down as Alice, Theodore Jr., Kermit, Ethel, Archie, and Quentin caught their breaths. Papa? Yes? When are we going to get our tree? Christmas is almost here. Well, said President Roosevelt, I've been thinking about that. It's not good to cut down trees for mere decoration. We must set a good example for the people of America. Our evergreen trees must be allowed to grow. And I've decided there will be no Christmas tree in the White House this year. But, Papa, whined Quentin, we've always had a Christmas tree. Christmas won't be the same without one. I'm sorry, but my conservation work is very important. We must save our trees for the future. <gasps> Please, Papa, begged the children. So, conservation, keeping things alive, having the national parks, that's part of what Theodore Roosevelt did during his presidency. Good. No tree. Oh, man. Let's see what happens. No, said the president. Then he'd be wriggling his fingers. He began to tickle them all until they raced to their rooms, squealing with laughter. The next day, the two youngest boys, Quentin and Archie, went to talk to their Aunt Anna about the Christmas tree. No tree in the White House? What a shame, she said. But maybe something can be done. We have an idea, said the boys. They leaned close and whispered in her ear. Uh-oh. Look at this cat. Look at this cat. This cat is, like, for real and true trying to listen right now. Look at that cat. He's like... Cat. The next evening, after it had grown dark, a lone window in the back of the White House opened. Two small heads poked out into the chilly night. Brr, Quentin said. There it is, Archie whispered, right where Auntie left it. How can we move it inside, Quentin asked. Should we carry it? No, that'll make too much noise. I've got a better idea. Remember when we played that escape game with Papa and he lowered us out the window with a rope? We could make one out of our sheets. Oh, that's a good idea. Quentin said. The boys scampered to their beds and tied some sheets together to make a rope. And then while Archie went outside, Quentin went back to the window. The cold winter air made him shiver. He peered into the blackness. Are you there, Archie? Yes. Now hurry up. It's freezing. Holding on to one end of the rope, Quentin lowered the other end to his brother. Archie worked fast, tying it around the tree. It's ready to go, he said. I'll be right there. As soon as Archie got back to the room, both boys pulled the little tree through the open window. <laughs> oh, dear. Tap, tap, tap. Listen, what's that? asked Quentin. Footsteps, Archie said. Quick! We must hide the tree. 
they scrunched the branches and hurriedly shoved the tree under Archie's bed. The door opened. I thought I heard something in here, their father said. Shouldn't you two be getting ready for bed? You're not sleepy, Papa. Which is always what kids do, answered Quentin. Hmm. The president rocked back on his heels, then sniffed. What's that I smell? Quentin gulped. Oh, well, uh, the window, Archie explained. We, we've had it open for a while and to see the stars. Mm -hmm. Yes, and maybe it's something from outside. Yes, yes, the window, Quentin agreed, his eyes big. President Roosevelt nodded slowly. Could be, he finally said. Now I suggest you boys get into your pajamas. Well, there, there's, there's little pine needles all over the floor. Mm. Uh huh. Quentin and Archie watched their father leave, then dropped to their knees and pulled out the tree. It got squashed. Quentin moaned. Don't worry, it'll be okay. Archie said. Let's put it in the closet. Good idea. Quentin whispered. Maybe we should go get the others. No, they tell. Especially Alice, Quentin nodded. The boys hauled the tree across the room. Tap, tap, tap. More footsteps. Oh, no, that sounds like Mama, cried Quentin. Quickly, they flopped the tree on Archie's bed, threw a blanket over it, and pounced on top just as their mother came in the door. Aren't you in your pajamas yet? Almost, Quentin said, wiggling to get more comfortable. We'll sleep like logs tonight. Archie gave him an elbow. Mrs. Roosevelt's eyes narrowed. All right, then. Good night. Good night, Mama, the boy said, blowing her kisses. They listened until the footsteps disappeared, and then they jumped down, uncovered the tree, and carried it to the closet. <laughs> yes, because trees live very good, long, productive lives in closets. Yes, yes, they do. Hmm. First, they stuck the trunk in a box of sand so the tree could stand by itself. And next, they got out the paper chains and stars they'd made earlier and hung them on the branches. And finally, they wrapped some boxes with pretty paper to make them look like gifts. There, Archie cried. Look at our beautiful tree. It sure smells like Christmas in here. Uh-oh. Quentin gasped. Quick! Shut the door! Archie whispered. He stood in front of the closet, trying to look innocent as their father stepped into the room. The president took a long sniff and marched over to the closet. He flung open the door and glared at the little tree. Folding his arms, he turned and eyed the boys. Archie and Quentin squirmed. Get your shoes on, he said sternly. We're going to see the chief forester. If you won't listen to me, perhaps you'll listen to him, and he'll set you straight on this. But isn't it too late? Archie asked. Oh, he'll be up, their father answered. Well, I'll bet he'll be up. Mm -hmm. President Roosevelt steered the boys out of the White House down the street and into the home of his good friend, Gifford Pinchot. Please explain to these boys why Christmas trees are not a good idea. They go against all my conservation efforts. Gifford Pinchot leaned back in his chair and looked at the president. And then he looked at the boy's sad faces. The ends of his thick mustache twitched. I'm afraid I can't do that, he said. Why not? the president asked. Because sometimes, if done right, it's a good idea to cut down some of the young trees, the forester explained. It gives the others more sunlight to grow bigger and stronger. Really? asked the president. Really? said Pinchot. The president thought for a moment. Well, 
That puts a new twist on things, doesn't it? Then he smiled. Is that bully? Which is 1900 slang for great. And kind of like slang, just in case you weren't sure. Hurrah! shouted Archie. Bully! cried Quentin. Everyone laughed. Christmas Day finally came to the White House. Aunt Anna arrived early in the morning with a tiny star for the tree. Archie led her to the boys' bedroom where the trees now stood in the center of the room. The rest of the family crowded around. Anna had presents for everyone, even Jack the dog, Tom Quartz the kitten, and Algonquin the pony. Merry Christmas, shouted the boys. Hurrah for the tree! Look! There's Jack the dog, Tom Quartz the kitten, and there's carrots for Algonquin. Always treat your pets nice on Christmas. Ah. Cool. Real picture. About Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt was the 26th president of the United States, and at age 42, the youngest president. When William McKinley was assassinated in 1901, the energetic Roosevelt, the then vice president, assumed office. A man once remarked that there was such fun in being led by him. During President Roosevelt's administration, the Panama Canal was constructed and laws were passed to improve the quality of food in the United States. He organized reforms that kept big businesses from getting too big. His belief in the rights of the little man endeared him to many people. Not everyone liked Roosevelt, though, and some referred to him as that cowboy in the White House. Nevertheless, he returned to office by a wide margin of votes in 1904 and remained president until 1909. A strong conservationist, Roosevelt worked closely with his chief forester and good friend, Gifford Pinchot. Together, they set aside millions of acres of forested land for future use and protection. Within these forests are many of the nation's precious natural resources. Hey, that's great. Oh my goodness. President Roosevelt loved to play with his children. He read to them all the time and knew plenty of ghost stories. Once when he was governor of New York, he pretended the governor's mansion was being attacked by enemies. He used a rope to lower his children out of a window to safety. Pillow fights and obstacle courses in the White House were not uncommon either. There were overnight camping trips and picnics too. President Roosevelt let the children and their friends swim with their clothes on and led them on hikes from where they all came back dirty and ragged. To be with him is to have fun. Roosevelt once wondered if he, as president, was being a bit undignified with all his wild and playful antics. Such doubts were short-lived, however, for as he wrote, I love all these children and have great fun with them and am touched by the way in which they feel I am their special friend, champion, and companion. That's so nice. That's so nice. Okay. Two for the price of one today. All right. The Christmas tree for Jesus. Celebrating God's gift to us by Susan Jones. And illustrated by Lee Holland. Very good. Whispers of excited voices float into the mouse family burrow. Curious little mouse pops out of bed. What's going on? asks little mouse. Some of our forest friends are choosing the tree we will decorate for the Christmas celebration, Mama Mouse explained. The mouse family isn't the only one up and about. Now tell everyone, now that everyone is ready to greet the day, who has ideas for how we will decorate our tree this year? asked Grandma Turtle. Let's make it all purple, suggests Little Hedgehog. Right on, Little Hedgehog. 
Ooh, I know, a cookie tree, shouts Little Bunny. What if we each add an ornament that celebrates something amazing about Jesus, suggests Grandma Turtle, and everyone thinks this is a great idea. Chatting excitedly, the friends scurry, hop, and fly home to get started on their ornaments. But Little Mouse walks slowly and quietly at the back of the pack. The next day, the decorating team gathers at the Christmas tree. Who is ready to add an ornament? asks Grandma Turtle. Some friends jump up and run to the tree. But where is Little Mouse? I brought a fish because Jesus made two fish and five loaves of bread feed more than 5,000 people, said Little Skunk. The manger reminds us that Jesus came to earth as a tiny baby, shares Little Bunny. And here is a sheep for Jesus our shepherd, said Little Chipmunk. Oh, this is precious. The next day, Little Hedgehog adds a crown for Jesus, the King of Kings, and Little Raccoon shares a butterfly for new life found through Jesus. And Little Bird brings a small bouquet of herbs because Jesus heals. And Little Mouse feels worried. What can she offer? What's wrong? asks Grandma Turtle. I have no ornament to share, Little Mouse says. I don't know what to do. Grandma Turtle puts her arm around Little Mouse. Let me tell you a secret. One of the most amazing things about Jesus is that he is with us today and every day. Just then, Little Mouse gets an idea. As his friends call after him, he runs home to get to work. Little Mouse works the rest of the day on his ornament and a surprise for his friends. The next day, Little Mouse can hardly wait to put his ornament on the tree. Show us, Grandma and the friends encourage him. I made a heart because it's so amazing that Jesus loves me, knows me, and came to earth for me on Christmas, says Little Mouse. That's precious. And that is true for all of us. So I made a heart for each of you. Oh, little mouse going the extra mile there. This Christmas tree is ready, just in time for our birthday celebration for Jesus, says little mouse. And you've already discovered the best gift, how Jesus knows and loves each and every one of us, says Grandma Turtle. Aww. The end. Oh, that's nice. And according to this, this is a brand new book. It just came out this year. So yay, cool new book. Well, thanks for joining me. I'm sad it's not live. I don't know what's going on with my internet today, but I'm glad that you're watching now if you are. And I hope that you have a very Merry Christmas. Mwah. See you quite soon. Bye.